Let's talk about autoimmune diseases. So what is an autoimmune disease? In a nutshell, it's when your immune system attacks the healthy cells in your organs and your tissues by mistake. So why am I mentioning this? So this is not how I had hoped or intended this whole thing to start. My knee's pretty bad right now. Like I mentioned in the last video, I was feeling great. And then on Saturday, we went out with some friends to a Korean barbecue place, something I was already nervous about doing. And the restaurant had, like we, my wife had talked to the restaurant ahead of time, and they had assured us that we'd be able to get meat and stuff that wasn't marinated. It would be just, you know, fresh cut meat, whatever. Everything seemed to be fine. And then we got to like some chicken breast. And then as I was eating it, I realized that it tasted funny. Turns out the chicken breast had been marinated in something. Sure as shit, my knee has completely seized up. It's inflamed, it's swollen, it's painful as shit. We noticed that as we were leaving the restaurant that like my knee was starting to go bad. And then it just got worse over Saturday. So I'm just spending today taking medicine to try and get the inflammation down. And these meds tend to knock me out for most of the time. So I'm gonna have to force myself to wake up at some point, probably when my wife comes home from work. My day one photos for the, for the registration and also take my, uh, my first weigh in. Obviously, I'm dealing with an autoimmune disease. And what causes this? Well, it's still unknown really. There's different theories about different types of microorganisms and bacteria in our body, but at the moment there's really no one consensus on what exactly causes an autoimmune disease. So it's Tuesday, feeling marginally better on my knee. Can walk a little bit. Feeling like shit from the meds. It's like, this is part of the problem when I have to go through this is that the medication that I have to take to fight it kicks my ass. So doing anything really when I'm on this stuff is tricky. The most common autoimmune diseases are lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, Crohn's, and ulcerative colitis. And I have rheumatoid arthritis as well as gout, which together is just a fun little cocktail of joint inflammation triggered by a myriad of things and an endless list of different foods and spices and things that's constantly growing and constantly changing. I will eat something that appears to be fine for me and then six months later suddenly my body doesn't want it anymore and causes inflammation. So that's fun. So I bring this up. Aside from the obvious that I'm still struggling with the inflammation of my knees right now. To the naked eye, you uh, you really can't see them. My knee doesn't look that bad, but inside from here, all the way down through here, it's all inflamed. So when my leg is in a bent position, it's okay. When my leg is in a straight position, it's okay. But my leg doesn't like getting to either of those positions. So that's what makes it the most difficult, is like sitting down and standing up are really, really painful. Once I'm up, I can kind of limp around and, you know, get around as need be. And then once I'm sitting, I'm pretty fine too. Laying down is a bit more difficult. I have to find like a good position that my leg wants to be in. A few years ago, when I first became aware of who Chris Bumstead was, is that I learned that he too suffers from an autoimmune disease. And he suffers from something relatively rare. It's called IgA nephropathy. Neph is about your kidneys. It's a pretty serious autoimmune disease and it can actually lead to some really bad complications. There's different reports of what he's doing to, to deal with it, but I don't wanna speak directly about what exactly he's doing to treat it because I don't know 100% and I, I'd hate to speculate, especially based off random stuff off the internet. And so what is IgA nephropathy? It's also known as Berger disease, B-E-R-G-R. -E -R. There's a germ-fighting protein called immunoglobulin A, which builds up in the kidneys. This causes inflammation, which over time can make it difficult for the kidneys to get rid of the waste in your blood. So why am I bringing this up? Well, in 2018, Chris was hospitalized six weeks before the Mr. Olympia competition. Six weeks before any bodybuilding competition is like 
crunch time for any bodybuilder. This is prep. This is when they're dialing in the last little bit of nutrition and really getting their bodies peaked to show up on stage and look as full and as shredded as possible. So you can imagine the devastating effect this would have on someone whose whole goal is to perfect the body for competition. So six weeks out from this competition, it's just not going to happen. So the reason why I bring this up is because he struggles from something that's completely debilitating and we, sh we share that. Obviously, we have greater differences in that, but being able to see someone who suffers from something very similar to me, to having to deal with inflammation, I think a lot of people hear the word inflammation and they don't fully really grasp what that means, especially when it becomes debilitating. Even when I explain to people that I have gout, I don't think they really even understand that either. It's extremely painful, and a lot of times when I get really bad inflammations, especially like in my feet and stuff, everything is so inflamed and it's in so much pain. I can lay there, even if like a simple sheet from a bed is laid on top of my feet to keep them warm, that pressure itself can put me to tears. It's, it's, it's really indescribable how painful this stuff is. So it's uh, Wednesday. Hey. <laughs> I just woke up and um, my knee is feeling better-ish. Still not 100%. I'm still not sure if it's uh, good enough for me to get in and out of the car much. But um, I'm going to try going for a little bit of a low-intensity steady-state walk at some point. Either on the treadmill or maybe I'll go to the grocery store with my wife or something. But... Um, I, mean, I, I need to get moving around because if, uh, if if my knee is recovered as much as it is today, fingers crossed, it'll be pain-free tomorrow when I can go back to the gym. Yeah, that's the plan right now. I'm going to just get my body moving, try to cope with the little bit of, uh, of residual pain I got left, but um, I should be good enough to kind of like move around at a better pace at this point, so... Yeah, the last three days so far. This started when I was in my 20s, and it wasn't happening very often, but when it did, it was very confusing. So I saw a bunch of different doctors, all gave different prognoses. I was even told at one point that I had plantar fasciitis, which is basically an inflammation of the plantar fascia, which is this part that runs underneath your foot. And I was told I had to get Birkenstocks and wear all kinds of lifts and all kinds of stupid stuff for my feet. The pain was still constantly happening. But eventually when I was like 35, finally met a doctor who was like, <laughs> you have gout, that's, that's what it is. And then I was referred to a rheumatologist who then eventually discovered that I also have rheumatoid arthritis, which is another chronic joint inflammation disease. And this is just something that's only gotten worse as, as I've aged. Um, as I say, it only happened a few times in my 20s but as I've gone through my 30s, now I'm 40, um, I've noticed that the frequency and the severity of these attacks is constantly, constantly getting worse. So it's Thursday morning. Not much of an improvement with the knee. Uh, I had to stop taking the medication yesterday because my blood pressure was getting to be in not a good spot. That's one of the, one of the other side effects of the medications that I take is that it jacks up my blood pressure. So um, I had to take the day off there I'm going to take a little bit more today. There's a bit of, still a little bit of niggling pain in my knee. Still making it hard to stand up from a seated position. I can move around a bit more though, <sighs> but not, not great. But another thing I noticed last night is that my knee was actually bothering me quite a bit last night when I was trying to go to sleep. And that tells me that there's still something that I'm eating that's causing a reaction. So I have to start eliminating stuff. And the number one thing that I have to eliminate for now is my protein powder. It tends to be a lot of things that are processed are typically what cause me the most issues. So I have to make some adjustments to my meal plan here. But yeah, protein powder is gonna be out for now. We're gonna see how my body reacts to that. And then go from there. I also got to figure out something to get a bit more activity into me because uh, last this week's been shit as far as activity. I mean, the medication doesn't help. Like I say, with the the grogginess and the high blood pressure, it makes it uh, really tough to really do anything. Like last night, I went for a bit of a walk and 
yeah, I just I did not feel good at all. I don't want to say I got to a dangerous place, but um, it was close. It was close. So today I need to try and get this uh, get this thing solved. I'm gonna ice my knee a bit more at some point. But yeah, we just gotta gotta find the root of the problem and uh, eliminate it, and then um, move on from there. Another thing I've been thinking about is I do want to actually kind of eat slightly less protein, and here's why. A number of years ago, when I was younger, I abused alcohol for, well, for a two-year period, I intensely abused alcohol, and for about a 10-year period around that, um, I abused alcohol quite a bit. When I say I intensely abused alcohol, so there was a two-year period where I worked at a bar, and I would routinely drink five to ten pints of beer every night, five, six days a week. Um, so that being said, uh, my kidney function, it's, it's not perfect. My kidney function isn't the greatest. I do have to get, I've got some blood work coming up that's going to give me some idea where I'm at currently. As you may or may not know, excessive protein is uh, a bit of a battle for the kidneys. Kidney function uh, also relates to gout, relates to autoimmune, stuff like that. So I got to be mindful of that as well. So, uh, I think initially the plan was to eat around 250 grams of protein a day. I haven't hit that quite yet. I think I've been getting just over 200. But I think I'm going to be looking at things and probably getting like maybe 180 to 175, somewhere in there. If it's also protein intake that's kind of having some knock-on effects with my kidneys, that's having some knock-on effects with the inflammation of my body yeah i just need to be mindful of all that and also i'm going to increase my omega-3 intake a little bit more and help fight the inflammation i've been taking two caplets routinely for a while and i've been up to four caplets the last few days but i might up that up to six just to try and help try to flush this out as well as the medication like i said there's it it's almost all gone it's uh, it's just it just there's enough of inflammation and pain in just the right spot where going from seated to standing is... It's painful. It's really fucking painful. I do like that I feel better today as far as like not groggy and shit. And also my face doesn't look like a tomato for my blood pressure. Overall, I feel much better today when I've woken up. But yeah, it's still just this knee that is uh, giving us some trouble. In 2019, I was actually bedridden, as I've spoke about before, I was bedridden for six months. And I had to relearn how to walk again, uh, because when I was finally able to stand, after those six months of being in excruciating pain, I had lost so much muscle in my legs that they didn't work properly anymore. So I had to, I had to use a walker just to get around for a while. And even just walking was exhausting. There's this thing called deconditioning syndrome, which occurs when your body is basically stuck in bed for a long time. And it results in loss of muscle strength. It can also affect your cardiovascular system. When I first was able to start walking again, I could only really move and walk for five minutes a day. And I would be exhausted, absolutely exhausted for the rest of the day. This took months and months and months of, of rehabbing and even to get my cardio back up to a place that was relatively normal took about two years. For the first two years after this I, I had a hard time having any energy and then on top of that to eventually learn that I also had sleep apnea wasn't helping things. So what I'm trying to say is that Chris is a huge inspiration to me. This is a guy who's at the peak of his fitness and body composition and he's only getting better each year not saying I want to be a bodybuilder, but I'm trying to fix my body. And there's someone out there who is dealing with something very similar to me. And he's at levels way above me when it comes to his body. That's a huge inspiration to me. He's learned how to fight through this, so why can't I? So, elimination yesterday of the uh, protein powder seems to be working. Um, I have had to take a bit more medication today. Uh, just to fight off the little bit of inflammation that was kind of still sort of happening from from before So still a bit of a pain in the ass getting up from a seated position, but I'm not limping nearly as much as I was before um, But hopefully being able to take a little bit more medication tonight 
hopefully tomorrow I'll be able to sit and stand with a bit more ease. Overall, the week's been pretty shit. Very little activity. I've just been a lot of sleeping and laying down, trying to minimize the pain in my knee as much as possible. I really don't enjoy this whole doing nothing. Um, it's pretty frustrating. Not really able to do anything. It doesn't help with depression. Uh, there's like nights where I can't sleep because I'm just stuck in my head. Um, so yeah, the more, the sooner I can get back to doing things again, the, the better it'll be not only for my physical health, but also my mental health as well. So um, yeah, we'll see how things are tomorrow. So needless to say, I'm still in a bit of pain here. And each day I keep hoping tomorrow's gonna be better. So I'm not sure, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But at least I have been keeping my nutrition on point. My goal for week two is at least to have this inflammation get out of my knee so I can at least get my cardio back up. I need to get my cardio in a good spot before I can start lifting weights again. A week off and a week of not moving, just jumping back into the gym is not a smart idea. It's too much stress on my system. Um, it just wouldn't be a good idea. So I need to ease back in. Even though it's only been a week, I still need to ease back into things. So I need to get my body back in a good spot where I'm able to move again. And once I'm able to move, I gotta focus on my cardiovascular system first. So that's the goal for week two. I'm gonna take this week by week, see how the week goes, and then reassess at the end of every week and see what changes I need to make. But always aiming for the same goal. I'm excited for my weigh-in tomorrow. I know that I'm down, I don't wanna talk about it today, but I do know that I'm down and I'm very, I'm very happy with myself right now. As much as this week has been a challenge physically, because of the pain I've been dealing with, I've been keeping true to myself and keeping true to my diet, and that's really starting to show. Oh, and before I forget, I kind of realized I made a mistake. Releasing a new video on Sunday is kind of stupid because that's not even a full week of documenting. So starting next week, the new episodes will drop on Mondays. That way I'll be able to record fully from Monday through Sunday, edit it together and get it out in a nice early time on Monday because this, this video is gonna come out way too late on Sunday. So yeah, my apologies for, for not doing my maths properly. I'll see you next Monday. So thanks for checking in. Uh, please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next week. Peace. <laughs>